Perfect. So thank you everyone for joining. My name, to introduce myself fully, my name's Stuart Baxter. I'm the Global Ambassador for Douglas Lane. I've been with Douglas Lane since November 2019. Prior to that, I was with Shivas Brothers in India for two years. Uh, so going from a multinational company with this very you know, large company to a smaller family-run independent company. Now you would think I'm going from a large collection of bottles, a small collection of bottles, that is absolutely not the case. I'm gone from uh, when working with uh, independent bottlers, we work with 65 plus distilleries. We have our six remarkable regional malts. And then if anyone knows us beyond that, those core six, we have limited editions, cash strength, sherry cascade, rock islands. It's an absolute wonderful, wonderful uh, portfolio that we have. But what I'm gonna do is we're gonna jump straight into our first dram, if we're all ready for that. Yeah. Big nods, shake the head. I've been looking forward to it. Yeah, thanks, Paul. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm thirsty as well, because it's um, the end of a long few weeks for us with a few projects on the go, so I'm looking forward to this. Um, are we ready with the first dram? Is it poured? I'm just going to see, Richard, are you outside? Like, actually outside, not virtual background outside? I I'm in sunny echo, thank you. <laughs> I'm going to my caravan. It's been taps half weather all day. <laughs> I'm so glad I started the recording. <laughs> right, so cheers into taps half. Uh, we'll go jump straight into our first dram. Now, there's a couple of reasons I like to jump in with the dram. It's also, first of all, to break the ice and toast all of you and thank you for joining, but also adjusting our palates up to a high strength of alcohol, which we are going to be featuring here. So, Slange, cheers to Big Pete, to Isla, to all of you. And Stuart, just to check, are we starting with the 12? We're starting with the core, Vinny, then the 12 year old, and then we'll finish with the Petra core. Perfect. Thank you. No problem at all. So, starting with the core, and the reason we'll have a sip of that, have a nose, and it's your whiskey now. I, I can't control what you do with it. Have a taste, and then we'll talk about it in just a second. But, you know, we're just kind of bringing their palates up. And the reason I do this, a lot of the time with the remarkable regional malts, we start with the Epicurean, which is our lowland blended malt. And I think everyone has this opinion because we start with everyone thinks it's the least flavorful and that's absolutely not the case i always get people to hold some epicurean in their glass and when they come back to it they realize how fresh and sweet and citric it actually is and it's the exact same concept here i don't know if anyone i'm trying to see if i can pick out any flush faces if anyone's been drinking cask or high strength whiskey all day who's smiling the most but if you haven't been then your palates are going to be adjusting. So what we do at Douglas Lane, and I'll talk about this in a bit, is high strength whiskey, it's non-shell filtered, no caramel coloring is as natural as it gets. So what you're seeing is we're adjusting our palates. You're bringing it up to that point. So just have a sip, have a nose, get used to that strength and then bring it through and enjoy it. Now, at any point throughout this, if there's any questions, please just stop, ask. You can direct message in the chat or just put it into the chat and I'll see it. And it's entirely up to yourselves. Um, use an option to direct message me at the bottom in the chat. And um, if anyone wants to share tasting notes and you're a bit too shy, I won't say your name. I'll just say what it says on the screen. Uh, email Stuart, could you switch me in as host? Be back. I thought I had switched you in as host. Just to make sure I have. Sorry, everybody. Zoom isn't always perfect. Uh, Beck, I believe you are host. Just make sure it is. I'll wait for the, the chat to come in. So I've had a question already, what age is the original? So all of our remarkable regional malts throughout are all non-age statements. The rough age on it's about seven to nine years old, or we can split that difference and just call it eight. Now, the wonderful thing I love about Big Pete's and the age statement on it is I remember when I was in India, I did a tasting for this very wealthy guy who didn't, wasn't afraid to show it, let's say. It wasn't my favorite character, but he always talked about, you know, I, I love PT whiskeys, but I only drink single malts that are 21 years and older. And I was, I was having a bad day and I was like, well, you don't, you don't like PT whiskeys then? And he's like, what do you mean? Of course I do. I'm like, no, the best time to drink a peated whiskey is between five and 10 years old. That's the best time. And the reason is, the reason is that peat is something that's aged out of whiskey. So peat is something that's introduced as whiskey as an extra. It's used through the germination process to stop germination. So it's the malting section. It dries out the barley, stops germination, gives you access to all those sugars. They yeast will eat and produce alcohol, more alcohol, more whiskey. So the reason is that 
when we age in the peat and use it to smoke through, it infuses in the barley. So the further that you get away from that distillation process, the sweeter I find that that peat becomes. So the best time to drink peated whiskey has been five and 10 years old. And um, make sure I've not missed anything here. I've just had a delicious dinner delivered for my 12 year old. Is it okay to eat or will I ruin the palate? Absolutely not, I don't think. I only think that Big Pete's going to enhance your palate for anything for the next few days anyway. So please stick it, uh, dig in. Drank a five-year-old the frog. It was brutal at cash strength. It's all about perception, isn't it? The only person that can tell if a whiskey is good or not is you as an individual. The frog does something that's a really deep cut. So they capture loads of phenols, loads of peaty flavors in their new mixed spirit. So you can actually age a the frog, for example, longer and get and maintain a lot of peat whereas something that doesn't do as deep a cut into those phenols, into that um, higher boiling point area, uh, you won't get as much length or age on that peat. And I think big peat is one of those things, it's the ultimate distillation of Isla. It captures the whole flavor profile of Isla perfectly. Um, Buna, Stoisha, I, on, I need to figure out how to pronounce half of Buna Haven's uh, profiles. I think their branding's absolutely wonderful. I'm a huge fan of Buna Haven, but I need to figure out the phonetic pronunciation of all of their bottlings. So if we had a nose and palate of this already, what's the first thoughts on this before I get into more detail about it? Big Pete Glass as well, Raina. Wouldn't expect anything less from you. What's the thoughts? Am I gonna pick on anyone it, just- It yet? tastes very earthy to me, which is quite a nice taste. Um, Cause I'm, I'm a, it, it is very nice. It's a shocking taste. I've never had big peat before, and it is. I'm, I'm very surprised in a, in a very, very good way. Nice. It's very enjoyable. I absolutely get that earthiness, and I think that's a very. It's a target flavour profile for us and what we do with big peat. And I'll talk about blend and malt and the achievement with it in just a minute. But it's absolutely a target, and I actually get. I don't know if anyone else is getting this, but I get a lot of sweetness within big peat. I think everyone just. A lot of people that maybe aren't big uh, peated whiskey fans, they just kind of dismiss it as sooty and ashy, which is exactly what it is. But I think there's a huge amount of sweetness to it. If anyone knows you're salivating, I have things like lemon meringue pie, there's vanilla in this, 100% bourbon cask aged. And you can tell with the color, there's no caramel coloring, that is natural color from the maturation process. But for me, there's that lemon sweetness, vanilla cream throughout it. You get different flavors every time you have it. You have a taste. Yeah. The one thing I absolutely love with Big Pete, and you'll see this, I think, even more with Peach Record, uh, hence the reason we're tasting it last for a number of reasons. But if you take it onto the tip of the palate with Big Pete, there's this controlled chimney smoke. You know, it's very balanced and controlled, and all of a sudden, when it, as soon as it hits your palate, it just builds and builds and builds and builds. And just that chimney smoke all of a sudden spills out onto the cabin floor and just builds into this bonfire smoke that you just can't control. And, no good peated whiskey's finished until you start exhaling. And as I said, whoever was having their dinner, you're just going to add to it. There's no way that you'll dominate Big Pete, I don't think. It's just going to add to your dinner. Key lime in the palate's a good one. I'm so jealous I'll taste tomorrow. Yeah, I think you will. I definitely think you will. So what we actually have and what we're drinking is blended malt. Now, everyone looks at blended and just assumes it's this horrible negative thing and it's absolutely not true. Blended just means two or more distilleries and you've got five categories of Scotch whiskey. So single malt is obviously the most prevalent, let's say everyone knows single malt. So single malt just means single, one distillery. Malt is barley. So it's from one distillery and it's made from barley only. Blended malt just means that you're taking from two or more distilleries blended and malt meaning it's only coming from barley as well. On the other side, I always talk about the two parents, one being single grain, the other one, single distillery and grain meaning anything that's not, sorry, anything that's not barley. So wheat for it probably more commonly, rye, corn, maize, underneath blended malt, uh, single grain, sorry, you've got blended grain. The only example commercially I can think of is uh, Compass Box's Hedonism. Um, anyone correct me if you can think of another one. A uh, wonderful, wonderful dram, but it's the only one I can think of as a blended grain commercially. And then in the middle, uh, what I like to call the, the big fat baby of the Scotch whiskey world, mainly because it takes up 85, 90% market share, is blended Scotch. And that's where you find White Mackay, uh, Shivers Regal, Johnny Walker, Famous Grouse, some wonderful whiskeys in there. But that's blending both single malt 
and single grain. So blended malt allows you to maintain that classical malt, heavy characteristic flavor profile, but taking from your favorite distilleries across Scotland. You're just kidding a candy shop as far as I'm concerned. But everyone sees this blended concept and thinks it's a really bad thing and it's not the case at all. So what we're doing here in Big Pete is taking single cast, single malts from multiple Isla whiskey distilleries. Most notably, Kalila, someone saw it earlier, Art Beg, Bullmore, and the original Port Ellen goes into every single batch of Big Pete. Teaspoon, but original Port Ellen goes into every single batch of Big Pete. Fred Lane, our chairman and owner, and I'll talk about the family in just a minute. He always talks about if he'd known the price of uh, Port Ellen nowadays, he wouldn't have put so much in his blended scotch back in the 60s. I think Fred Lane might be single-handedly responsible for the price of Port Ellen as it stands just now. So there's an accolade for you just there. But I just absolutely adore it. It's got that smokiness, that sooty, ashy, there's a sweetness to it, but it just envelops your whole palate. And if you bring it back to the nose, it's really balanced. It's not overly medicinal, it's not overly smoky on the nose. It's clean, it's organized, there's a balance to it. Just looking to see if there's any notes I've missed here. Key lime pie was a good one, I really like that. Now, don't be afraid to talk about tasting notes. It's one of the most difficult things in the world to do. And some people are really good at saying, that's a tar covered over Oreo on a hot summer's day. And you're like, great, if you can do that, amazing. And some people are really good with memory. Some people are great with tasting notes. And the, the best thing I can always say is start big and work your way down to a point. So you can say something sweet, like great. Sweet is a plethora. You've got fruit sweetness. You've got candy sweetness. And then within fruit sweetness, for example, you've got tropical fruit, orchard fruit. Uh, berries so it's always good to start big and get further down and the closer that you can come to the point the better but if you can pick out immediately a memory or something please do but you'll never ever be wrong in whiskey tasting notes what makes my job really easy i get to be lazy as hell about it but it makes my job really easy in the sense that you can't tell me what i taste and smell and i can't tell you what you taste and smell so you'll never ever be wrong the only time you might be wrong is if you say something's peated and it's not peated. That's the only thing that's actively added in terms of a flavor profile, let's say, to Scotch whiskey. But something can be smoky and not be peated. You can get heavily charred casks, especially if it's a younger new mixed spirit that's going in, or it's a younger aged whiskey. If you get heavily charred cask, you can get that smoky, smoky flavor. Yeah, Rona, you're talking about um, Port Ellen. Port Ellen is reopening again. Is reopening again, which I'm very excited about. Kilcoman in our blends. As far as I know, Ronan, no, we don't. But I am not at liberty to say because I'm not part of the blending team. Uh, so I only get to know so much about these blends. But no, as far as I'm aware, we don't use kind of uh, Kilcoman. Alan, pineapple cubes. I had this in a tasting two weeks ago, and it's the original ones, right? The the older boiled sweets, pineapple cubes that you used to get. I'm looking for Alan somewhere <laughs> to agree with me someone said this in a tasting a couple of weeks ago and i can't get it out of my head it's one of those original pineapple cubes anyone that doesn't know they're they're boiled sweets they were boiled sweets and they're really square pineapple with like dusting of sugar and they were, they were great and we got really detailed in this and someone said it's not fresh pineapple it's tinned pineapple and that's that's the pineapple flavor and that's mental we got really really far down down that down that triangle and we got to that tinned pineapple juice Is there so much Port Ellen for the future for Big Pete? Yes, Bart, there is. Uh, we have, I think, one of the, the fourth best stocks of Port Ellen um, in Scotland, which is, I mean, as you can imagine, very impressive. But And the reason that we do is it's Fred, Cara, uh, Chris, is one of their favourite distilleries. And um, so it's one that we've, we've bought up in the past. It was Fred's dad's favourite distillery, so it's one that we've bought up in the past. So a quick slange again, and then I'll talk a little bit about Douglas Lane. It's a terrible job. It's a terrible job. So I don't want to switch for a couple of days. <laughs> Some of your hands go up as well. Anyway, so those of you that don't maybe know much about Douglas Lane and maybe know a lot about Big Pete. So Douglas Lane, we've been a family run company since 1948. 
It's dating all the way back to 1948, and we were founded by Fred Douglas Lane, hence the name. Fred Lane Jr. Uh, is our chairman and owner, and he's taking a step back from the company. And um, over the past few years, his daughter, Cara Lane, is our director of whiskey, and her husband, Chris Leggett, is our CEO. So very much in the family. They've got two lovely children who I'm sure there's no pressure to, uh, but hopefully will someday take over the distillery. But we're in our third generation. And since 1948, we've been known as blenders and bottlers. Blenders, producing Big Pete, Scallywag, Timorous Beastie, our blended malts and remarkable regional malts. And bottlers, as I said earlier, we work with 65 plus distilleries. I think you can see some of them over my shoulder pointing here. Uh, these have been borrowed from the sample room. Uh, for ambassadorial purposes. Um, <laughs> but we work with 65 plus distilleries. And the wonderful thing about that is why, well, for example, I've got Talisker 9 and Talisker 11 over my shoulder here from both from Refill Hogshead Cast. And what I love talking about and the freedom I get to talk about is as natural as it gets, as I said earlier, is how amazing whiskey actually is. New mixed spirit from Talisker is always going to be the same. They need to maintain that. They need to have that structure. But as soon as you put it into casks, regardless of the fact that they're the same type of casks, you have specifically different whiskies. Profile will always be the same. You know, you'll have maybe that salty maritime vanilla character, but specifically you'll have two different whiskies. And when you think about, okay, we've put Talisker into PX, Oloroso, Port, um, first fill bourbon, second fill bourbon, third fill bourbon, you're seeing all these variations, just one distillery, and then you multiply that 65 plus times. It's amazing having that variety. So anyway, if anyone can please stop me, I will go on Billy Connolly tangents. So just drag me straight back. But we work with blenders and bottlers we have been since 1948. And then in November 2019, we took over Strathern Distillery in Perthshire and became distillers for the first time in our history, which was very, very exciting. Now, Strathern, we're going through a massive refurb, but at the time you could quite literally reach around and touch your fingers on the stills, they were dinky things. Uh, we're going through a massive renovation and upping our capacity there. And I need to be careful, and I might talk about this now in case I have too many whiskies and reveal too much, but we are building Clutha in Glasgow. Uh, it was meant to be going to be on the Clyde side. We've had to move site, uh, but we're, going to, we're building Clutha and that's gonna be our Glasgow-based distillery. Much, much larger and capable of, is it a million, million cases a year? And um, so it's a serious, serious outfit, uh, producing three single malts is the still the concept. As far as I'm aware, we're looking at a Highland style, a Lowland style, and then a peated new mixed spirit. Uh, we'll be able to take on about 60% of our stock. Now, to put that into perspective, we have 44,000 casks at any one time with Douglas Lane. And the one thing I realized, it was only a four or five months ago, I did a tasting with the pot still in Glasgow. And uh, it wasn't until then that I realized that you know, we work with, where we're independent bottles, we work with 65 plus distilleries. If you go to Glengoin, favorite distillery, you could Glengoin casks, you go to Glenalchy, you've got Glenalchy casks. We're gonna have the casks of 65 plus distilleries under one roof, and I get to go and play hide and seek with Fred Lane as <laughs> much as I can. Um, but that's, you know, we're gonna have casks from Ardbeg, Port Ellen, uh, Glen Cadden, Glen Asau, uh, Talisker, Glen Goyne, you name it, we'll have it in the cask somewhere under that warehouse, which I'm really, really excited for. Just seeing if there's any questions coming. If anyone's going to ask any questions, please just come off mute. I'm more than happy for you to do so. This is a nice, relaxed Thursday night, so please hammer away. Wood fired marshmallow, Paul. Nice. Yeah, that's what I'm getting with the smell. Nice. There is because I think there's a huge amount of sweetness. Everyone just discounts yeah. this as a PT whiskey. And yeah, of course it's a PT whiskey, but there's a lot more delicacies than it than just that. Now, maybe you should have said this and it was a delicious whiskey. If you can keep a little bit and things, you'll you'll nose it anyway, even if you have finished it. Don't worry about it. But if you keep a little bit in your glass, you'll see the difference between this, the 12, and the peach record. You'll see a massive, massive difference. Now, I don't want to go too quickly because I'm enjoying this. But are we ready for Big Peak 12 or do you want to just keep having a sip of Big Peak Core? You ready? Go yeah. for it, Ronan. This is Ronan spoken for everyone. Go for it. Right. Brilliant. So we're moving into Big Peak 12. So age statement on any bottle. 
is the youngest cask used within that. So single malt, as I mentioned earlier, single malt is technically blended. You're just blending casks from one distillery. That's it. It's not until you get to single casks that you genuinely have a single cask. I know it sounds silly that I'm explaining that, but um, the amount of people that say, do you mean single malt is blended? It technically is. You're just blending casks from the same distillery. So when you see a single malt or any age statement on a bottle, for example, 12, so the youngest cask going into the Big P12 is 12 years old, but there will be casks older than that. This comes in at 46% as well as uh, Big Peat Core. Remember I mentioned earlier, peat is something that's aged out of, whis of, uh, out of whiskey. So with Big Peat Core, that's probably optimum peat whiskey drinking time. But going into Big Peat 12, for me, it becomes a lot more moodier, becomes a lot more mellow. It's a more, I don't know, it's more of like a rustic kind of just smoked cask as opposed to intense, maybe sharp peat that we want and achieve with Big Peat Core. For me, it's a much more moodier, darker smoke. Still a lot of cleanliness in the nose for me. I think, for, I don't know about anyone else, but for me, there's a saltiness in the nose that maybe wasn't as prevalent on the Big Peat Core. So I'm, I'm, I'm just going to share a note that I got that completely, and I'm not sure if anyone else might get this one, but this smells to me exactly like Creed Aventus. It's a fragrance and it's it's got a burst of pineapple in it. This this opens exactly, I mean, this is on the nose, exactly Creed Aventus. Really? Yeah. I wouldn't mind wearing that as a clone, to be honest. <laughs> 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 yeah, I, it's really bizarre because the more that you sit with it on the nose, because it's that level of peat, you know, because it's an intense drum, it's, you know, we're not hiding the fact it is, it's big peat. We wouldn't have called it big peat if we didn't mean it. But the more that you sit with it on the nose, there's more to it. It reveals a lot more to it. As you're saying, Vinit, that sweetness, that pineapple's definitely there. I'm picking up things like saltiness. Alan's got dark chocolate saltiness. Salted caramel. Yeah. It's I even got weird. cola the second time that I had it. It was like a, a cola. Mm -hmm. Nice. This one on the palate. Oh, I just think it's really creamy and sweet. Slanch. Cheers. Big love from Isla from Glasgow. <laughs> it's just tones it down just that i mean we're thinking the average age of big peak core is about eight years old i was saying average age on this is maybe 13 so when you think about the average age you're looking at five years that's a significant difference for any whiskey it just it's more i don't know core wood campfire as opposed to maybe coal i don't know i'm trying to it's really difficult to do these things when you're just you're trying to pick out in your head you know what you mean but it's just moodier it's darker. It's even softer in a lot of ways. You do get that more wood-fired rather than coal-fired. Like you've just said, you do get that more natural yeah. smokiness. Susie was saying rhubarb cream and toasted marsh. Oh, you know, we got delivered rhubarbs, Susie, and I, I, I'm trying to, I've made so much rhubarb jam, I don't know what to do with it. <laughs> So oh, it's almost like, uh, you know, when you drop your marshmallow into the fire, but you pick it up and eat it anyway. Yeah, exactly. One of the, they're the best ones. Oh, but that's the thing, you know, what we're achieving with Big Pete is, as I said, it's single cast, single malts from Isla. So with all of the remarkable regional malts, which the Epicure and the Lowlands, Timmer Species in the Highlands, Scallywag and Speyside, what we're doing is capturing the traditional flavor profile of each of those regions. So if someone says that's a classic space side flavor profile, that's what we're achieving with Scallywag. And what I think, I, I, I'm not saying I'm, I'm a big whiskey geek. I, I love whiskey just in general. I think Big Pete captures Isla really, really well. It has that smokiness that Lefroy and Ardbeg offer. It has that sweetness that Kalila brings forward, that richness of Beaumont. I mean, when you look at the, I used to work as a smelly, so legs, tears, tails, whatever, whatever you want to call them, running down the inside of the glass. You know, we had no caramel colouring, as I said. You look at this and assume it's going to be a very, maybe thin whiskey. It's maybe, maybe not as intense. We already know it's pretty intense, but it's viscous. 
you look at the tails, the tears running down. Even before you've tasted it, it's, it's a heavy, dense liquid. It is. And that liquid you're seeing there, that's 12 years old, minimum. Minimum 12 years old, and naturally coloured. And I'll, I'll talk about that in just a second. But everyone assumes, and you look at, for example, our timorous beast, everyone assumes it's, oh, it's a cute little mouse. It's a very light coloured whiskey. It's 46.8%. It's a bold for, flavour forward whiskey. You know, it will, uh, will punch you. <laughs> and it's great for it. Chris Barbecue Sea Baskin. Lovely tasting note. Love that tasting note. Someone said to me the other day, um, they got frazzles on Big Peak Core. Now, anyone that doesn't know what frazzles are, they're, they're bacon crisps, but they've got the, the aerated monster munch style. Um, they're just amazing. But someone said frazzles on the Big Peak Core the other day, and I, I loved that. But crispy barbecue sea bass skin, coastal, salty, absolutely. Fermented lemons in the nose, brilliant. Sea salted dark chocolate and finished with sherbet dip. Nice, Richard. I think I know what you mean, Stuart, by uh, the age and the peatiness coming out of it, because I find this a lot tamer than the original, um, and, and especially the finish. I think this has got quite an abrupt finish, whereas the originals, it lingers in your mouth for quite some time. It's the exhale as well, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's the, the breathing, you know, it sits with you a bit longer, and that's the whole concept behind Big Peak Core, is that, you know, we wanted it to be, it was the first one, you know, it was the one that started all of our market visual malts that... We had no concept of doing more. It was going to be in 2009 we started Big Pete, and I'd love to see everyone's uh, best Big Pete face, uh, this handsome man. But he started in 2009, and the idea was that it was going to be an Isla Blended Malt. We had no concept to do further. And then it wasn't until uh, Binks, who was the, was, is the operative word there, the model for the Scallywag box, our space side Blended Malt, hopped up next to Fred when they were designing a limited edition of Big Pete. The artists started sketch, sketching Binks and they decided we'll, we'll make a brand out of it. And then they decided to do a, a space side blended malt. And from there, uh, it just took off. We all did all the regions, but he was the one that started all. And now to just make everyone comfortable, Big Pete is not a whiskey. He does exist. He does exist on Isla. He's a fisherman on Isla. He's a family friend of Douglas Lang. I need to make that imperative. I've been told that since day one. Still to meet him. I've received a few postcards from him suspiciously in Fred's handwriting, but uh, he does exist. He is a fisherman. He does exist in Isla. He's the Bigfoot of Isla, and he, he sits there. Anyway, I need to let you know. But to kind of talk about what we do at Douglas Lane and enjoy your 12, and we'll come back around to it. You know, we do everything as natural as it gets. Now, what do we mean by that? Everything we do, and we're very proud of this, is no caramel colouring, as I said. So there's absolutely no caramel colouring in any of the whiskies we're tasting tonight, or any of our remarkable regional malts, or old particular as single casks. So it's natural colour from the cask that you see. Non-chill filtered, meaning we allow Pete Who, a very good Donald. <laughs> good question, fair question. Um, Non-chill filtered, meaning we allow all the naturally occurring fatty acids that occur in whisky, we allow them into the final product. Now, this is still argued readily within the Scotch whisky industry. In my opinion, uh, if you add fatty acids, proteins to anything, it's 100% affecting the texture. And whether that directly or indirectly affects flavour, um, I absolutely believe it does affect flavour. So we allow all the fatty acids and proteins into the final whisky to add texture and give you flavour. And then the last one is high strength alcohol. So the only thing that's been done to these whiskies is that alcohol has been controlled, not in peach record, by the way, but just the first two. The alcohol has been controlled down to 46%. Now, the reason that we keep a high strength or work with higher natural cash strength is because alcohol carries flavor beautifully. Um, I always use aftershaves and perfumes as an example. They're alcohol-based because they hold flavor really well. Now, alcohol... Dave Broom wrote about this a, a good while back and talked about how 46, 48% is around optimum to carry flavor and not kill or be overpowering in ethanol. Now, of course, when you look at grains, you can push grains much higher in percentage. If you look at a first fill port or first fill sherry, you can push that higher in percentage. Casks differ. But when you're looking at your average, your hogsheads, your bourbons, even your second, third fill sherries, 46 to 50% you can get is optimum to carry flavor through and not overkill an ethanol. So that is the main reason or the reason that we do high strength alcohols that the flavor carries through. The happy bonus, which is my, it's unnecessary information. It's just me being a whiskey geek and loving it. 
the happy bonus is when you maintain a high level of strength. Has anyone ever added water to a non-chill filtered whiskey or ice and it becomes cloudy? The happy bonus is that you can add water or ice and it will stay clear. Now, obviously, if you, you know, traveling long distances and keeping it at low temperature a while, you'll see that. But if you add water or ice immediately, you'll see it stays clear, which is a happy bonus, but not the reason that we do it. I'm going to see what we wouldn't have in Peter. They're only Isla not peated whiskies. So Bart, you're asking if there's any non-peated whiskey in Big P. Fair question. And to my knowledge, no. It's all peated whiskey that goes into Big P in the marriage. And now, to kind of put that into perspective as well, actually, all of our remarkable regional malts, we average about 9,000 bottles per batch. Now, that seem, may seem like a lot, but when you put that into perspective of larger companies than us, 9,000 bottles would be a limited edition in one market. You know, the key focus for us at Douglas Lane is liquid quality because we're so close to customers and consumers when people speak about us you know it's not just heard by brand managers it's heard by fred lane by carol lane and um, every single time and i can't stress them out every single time it's heard by them so it's so important for us that the liquid that we're producing is as the best quality that we could we can possibly produce um, the douglas lane company or collect one all but yeah, uh, Rainer and Bart, who are on, have some of the most impressive uh, Douglas Lane collections I've, I've ever seen. And um, I'm trying to challenge them. I, I can't do it. <laughs> I can't do it. And um, I've got a decent collection going on here, but this is all borrowed. <laughs> it probably will be going back at some point. Um, Bruno's saying biscuit flavors like chocolate digesters with lime chutney. Nice. It's really lovely to see this level of complication coming out in the liquid. It really, really is. Has anyone noticed the difference between the Big Peak core? Has anyone, ha has anyone got the opportunity? I know I said it late. Has anyone kept some in their glass from the original one? I'd have said that the, the, the core is a lot more smokier than, yeah. than, than the 12. And it feels like it's got a lot more body to it. It's interesting because you... Knows. Yeah, you would assume that the, the 12 would have more body because you're aging it a bit longer. Yeah. I know exactly what you mean. I think there's this, I keep going back to these words, but I, I absolutely believe them as that dark, moody concept as well. It just becomes a bit more rustic, I feel. Hmm. <coughs> absolutely brilliant. I'll be sniffing this long after you've finished this meeting. Right. <laughs> It's you know, it's great. It's, see the amount of times I've left glasses and uh, next to the sink. And the next morning you pick them up and it's changed completely, and it's just just stuck to the inside of glass. I've, of course, polished them off. It's amazing how much you can smell out of them. Absolutely. Uh, short bit of custard cream. The core is more sharp, Susie. It also has a short bread and custard cream. So, Stuart, just out of curiosity, is there a difference in the kind of casks that were used across all three of these, or is it just Bourbon. All bourbon and hogsheads that have been repurposed from bourbon, if that makes sense. So they're all ex-bourbon casks. Um, and regarding the spec list, and again, more information than, than was asked for, but regarding the kind of spec list, we're always working towards that big peat core flavor profile, but just tweaking it slightly for things like the peat core, for things like the world uh, tour that I've got behind me on the shelves here, uh, where he's traveled the world. You know, we always try and tweak it whether we're upping the percentage slightly, um, ramping up Kalila, ramping up Ardbeg or whole more, depending on what we're looking for, just to give it a tweak. But as I said earlier, you know, always maintain that profile, but specifically having those differences for limited editions and city editions, for example. And would it be, a, and I'm not sure if that's something that uh, you might be able to share, but is this, I'm guessing, uh, Heaven Hill stock? Heaven Hill. Yeah, the bourbon uh, casks, are they are they from Heaven Hill? As far as I know, I'm not sure. Honestly, don't know, Vinny. It's not that I'm not telling you, I just don't know. If I said anything, I'd be lying to you, and I don't I don't want to lie to you, Vinny. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, no MC piece. That's okay. I'm sure it died quite quickly. It probably has happy death. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I just realized that the, the chat isn't going to be recorded, so that's going to be completely out of context. Right. Um, well, I, <laughs> I, I drank the fly, so. Oh, that's fine. So it's not enough alcohol content. It's not going to do it. Not
they may not have been dead. They may have just been drunk. So, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sleeping. <laughs> sleeping. Absolutely. <laughs> Uh, it's not really in the core now. Uh, that's like the love child of Boon having the frog. And I actually, I kind of love that tasting though. <clears throat> you know, Boon having has that kind of softer approach and the frog is obviously one of the more PT versions of an Isla. And I, I, I absolutely agree with you. And I just think it's a great, I always go back to this ultimate distillation of Isla. I think it absolutely is. It, it encompasses all of them. And I think that's, you look at, for example, our Rock Island, it's a difficult thing to do when you've got, you know, the likes of Jura, Aaron, and then you've also got, you know, Orkney distilleries. You've got, a lot to cover there. And I think Rock Island's one of my absolute favourites. I think it does it really well. And I think Big Pete has, you know, we worked with it for such a long time. It absolutely perfects that. It just has that sweetness of Kalila and the depth of, uh, of Laphroaig. I think it absolutely nails it. And um, again, I don't want to move on too quickly, but there's, there's loads for me to talk about here. You know, talking about building a distillery, the one thing that we've always done and we're really proud of is our wood policy. You know, what people ask me about when we do single cast tastings is are we buying ready age stock. And in fact, what we're doing is introducing the new make spirit from these 65 plus distilleries into casks that we've purposely chosen for these spirits. And obviously we do our wild and wonderful stuff on top of that, but the core bottlings are always gonna be that traditional Scotch whiskey concept. But I've got, we've got an Epicurean that's been aged in a dessert wine cask. We've got Rock Island Sherry, which is my sixth bottle of it and I won't tell you in the space of time I have bought it um, but we do our weird and wonderful stuff as much you know we're, we're Douglas Lane it's exactly what we love to do but then we've got our traditional concept and the reason I mentioned the wood policy and what we're really proud of and, and the fact that we're introducing a cast and then aging it and then selling it is that we wanted to have that element of craft and control over what we did and now having Clutha having a distillery to play with after 71 years 72 years the wonderful thing now is that we have that understanding of the most difficult bit of whiskey maturation, and that is the maturation process. So introducing it into casks once we produce a spirit, Fred, Cara, Chris have this amazing understanding of how the new make spirit is going to age in specific casks over 70 years, which I think is wonderful passed down. And the great thing is, is that I remember when I was working with Pernod Ricard, I sat down with Sandy Hislop, who's, if anyone knows, master blender of Glenlivet, Royal Salutes, genius wonderful wonderful man and he talked about how the casks that he's working with he didn't put them down it was his predecessor and the casks that he's putting down are not for him they're for his successor and i love the idea that you translate that into family-run company the casks that cara is bottling now her grandfather uh, who's since passed he was the one that put them down our fred has put them down and passed them on the casks that cara is now putting on you know georgian uh, Rory are really, really tiny just now. Um, you know, one day they might lift these casks and decide to bottle them, which I, I absolutely love. But that's one of the reasons I fell, I fell in love with the Scotch whisky industry. There's so much romance to it. And the fact that this is the most complicated spirit in the world. I'm not making that up. It is the most complicated spirit in the world and yet is quite logical to understand. It is fairly logical, but it's just the element of control that we just don't have when it comes to cast maturation. It's, it's amazing. Uh, Rainer, Sherry and Smoke, the, the Rock and Sherry I adore. It's amazing, absolutely amazing. It's just a Willy Wonka dram. It's island coastal flavors, 100% Sherry cask aged. That's not to love, that's not to love. Is there any questions at this point before I throw us into Petricor? No? All good? We're just keen to get it, get it sampled. Right, let's do it. Let's do it. Right, so moving in to Petricor. Now, if you saw the AV at the very beginning, I know some people are trying to get into the waiting room. Petricor, or the original word Petricor, is the smell that is given off by dry, salty earth once the rain has hit it. So we've tweaked it just slightly and called it Petricor. And that is our May bottling of Big Pete. You can see it here. So it's an all embossed label on Big Pete, as well as the raindrop of Petricor. And he's in his yellow rain jacket. So this is cask strength. So then there has nothing has been done to this liquid, apart from the fact that it's had to be filtered because every whiskey has to be filtered unless you want wood chips and char in your glass. Lovely as that might actually sound. Uh, legal reasons you definitely can't do it. There's nothing else that's been done to this liquid. This is raw liquid as it goes. 
So this is bottled at 53.8% cask strength. You can see why we've tasted it last. And it's limited edition. This is one 5,190 bottles. And that's it. Just give you a quick look. Yeah, the raindrops are quite magnificent. I'm just seeing if I can do it justice on the camera here. That's the whole label. It's great. And it's all embossing, as I said, on the, the big P and late on the raindrop. 53.8%. Slange. Should we just jump straight in? And then we'll talk about it, shall we? Slange. Cheers. Brain, I was saving my, my big peak glass for this one. Now that is just the neat lemon lime in the nose a hundred percent, but it's just that tar, licorice sweetness. It's darker. You know, it's as I said earlier with the big peak core, it's kind of multiplying that by 10. It's just that build and build and build on the palate and then breathing through your nose. It's that sharpness. It is. There's an intensity to it. There's medicinal notes in it. Susie, you see maple syrup for that one as well? Should I catch this? Yeah, yeah. Um, really, really sort of syrupy and, and a little bit chewy. It's very thick. Yeah, yeah. I mean, maintaining a high level of alcohol content, non-chill filtered, absolutely. It's totally unexpected. You know, it, 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 the, the nose is completely different to the taste. Yeah, 100%, 100%. For me as well, saying it's a peat bomb. Yeah, absolutely delivers as a peat bomb. And Ronan, it's like licking a chimney after a turf fire. You know what's funny is I love these tasting notes because in practice, that's a terrible idea. <laughs> but as a tasting note, that's a brilliant tasting note because that's just very romantic, right? That sounds like a great tasting note and it is a great tasting note. I'm getting a lot more uh, flavour on the exhale as well, rather than when your face, when your hit, face hits your tongue. Yeah. Oh, I, I absolutely love it. It's just, it's an amplified version. It's just in your face and you know, we do our big peak Christmas every single year. Uh, I think this is on to our 12th bottling of big peak Christmas, a cash strength. Rainer's got one right there. That was our last, that, last year's, that was a uh, 2020s, wasn't it? Or, you know, not talking about. Uh, yeah, that's a, it's an absolute cracker. Foot in the turf and fighting off the midges. Nice Ronan. I'm away uh, wild camping on Saturday. So I've got a, a big peak peach recorder to bring in there. Uh, Surprise all my friends with. <laughs> oh, Rainer's got the t shirt as well. Big Peter Santa. <laughs> Brilliant. Maple syrup and scotch pancakes on the nose, thick and coats the tongue. Feels like I've licked my fire pit. Brilliant. Again, don't do that, but that's insane. <laughs> Yeah, for me, it's it's like, you know, I don't know if you ever had those really, uh, the hard orange candy, like uh, like the sugar candy, but it's the, orange. The brass tin, Vinny. Yeah, or in a jar. I mean, we normally used to get them out of a jar kind of thing. And yeah. then it fell into like a uh, freshly ground pepper. That's that's what I'm getting on the palate. That's a good one, actually. It has that, yeah, it's got that intensity and smokiness. And then inside there is a sweetness to it. And again, there is sweetness to this. If anyone's not a regular PT whiskey drinker, you, you there is sweetness to it. I promise you there is. White pepper, old Danish bacon in the yellow pocket, in the yellow packet, cooked to a crisp. Nice. It's not frazzles, fresh bacon we're talking now. Crispy fresh bacon. I absolutely adore that. What this reminds me of, there's a, there's a sweet shop that's down the road from where I live. And you walk in and there's the, 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 the smells that you get when you walk into this, this sweet shop. This is where, I, that's where I'm getting, this, this sweet shop. Brilliant. And, and that's the kind I was thinking of, you know, the, the one where you have like some granny, 75 year old lady behind the counter and, and all of these different colored jars, like yeah. the big glass jars. That's exactly what I was thinking. And yes, think golden syrup and mint chocolate around the bonfire. Nice. Brilliant. Uh, Petricor. So it's a take on Petricor 
bar. So petrichor is the smell of dry soil when the rain hits it. Do so you know that really distinctive smell? Uh, that I think you know most people probably smell. Uh, Richard, you probably smelt it more recently out the, the caravan. Um, but it's that smell of hitting dry earth and then you know that kind of fresh salty grass. And obviously we've changed it to petrichor uh, with a little addition of an A that we thought no one would notice. So it's petrichor is the, the actual word, but petrichor is what we've called it. So we've really kind of ended it. And the irony is, you know, we talk about rainfall. There's no drop of water in this. It is natural cask strength. It's a pretty intense drum in a good way. I think in an absolute good way. Sweet pink shrimps. Is this the, the foam ones, Alan? The, like the foam bananas and the foam shrimps you used to get? I'm looking for Alan. Am I missing Alan? See on the next page. Alan's, he's not going to get anyone. That's why. That's why. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Keep enjoying that and I'll keep talking, obviously. But we go, we've got, um, I've been allowed to talk about an edition that we've not released any labeling, any artwork, any marketing for, and I'm allowed to talk about it. I'm not allowed to show you anything, um, but I am allowed to talk about it, which is quite exciting. We have a Euros edition coming out of Big Pete, and I've got all the specs here for it. So it's a Euros edition of Big Pete. We're only going to be doing 400 bottles of it, and it'll be coming in at 53.3% cask strength. So you are, apart from obviously the marketing team, I don't even think half the sales team have maybe heard about this, but you are the first people to ever hear about it. So we have a Euros edition. Uh, so do keep an eye out for a Euros edition of Big Pete, uh, 400 bottles that we're doing. You are the first people to ever hear about it. And as I think someone had mentioned earlier, we've got Big Pete's done his world tour. I've got bottles up behind me here from Russia, I've got Munich, Vienna. We've done, God, who else? We've got Kyoto, Tokyo, even Hungary. We've done the Orange Kings edition for, uh, for Holland as well, for the Netherlands. Um, we've, we've taken them all over the world and I've still never met him. Don't get it. I travel just as much as he does, never met him. Or used to travel as much as he has, never met him. Uh, Ron, if you sign up for douglaslane.com, that's the fastest way. That's the fastest way that will go to roll out. Rainer, I know Rainer. It's it's not just it's not DHL. Um, it's it's um, that nasty B word uh, that we're we're all having to deal with. Um, but I'm glad they got them to you. Okay. Yeah, because it arrived on like, 16th of May. Your samples. But it's just that nasty B word that we're dealing with. Regards. It's not not just DHL. Um. There you go. Now, when we sent out the boxes, I'd sent an email that Big Pete had signed two postcards. Do we have them on the call this evening? Now, you've got the rigid stamps that uh, Susie is kindly holding up. Uh, Donald has one. It's actually has, my life. Thank you, Donald, that's what you're looking for. And Colin has the other. Congratulations. Cheers. Cheers. So those were the two. I had a few emails saying, like, well, I've got a postcard, but no writing on it. So those were the postcards that we were looking for. The, the other ones are actually stickers. It's not just the art. Congratulations, guys. So if you get in touch with me via email, we will send you out a big Pete care package. But I did promise on the email that there'd be another chance to win. So I have that question for you now, if you're ready for it. So this is not going to be fastest finger. This is going to be closest to, to give everyone a fair chance. Now, I'm only going to give you a, let's say, 10-second window because Google's a hell of a thing. So I'm going to give you a 10-second window to type in your answer, and it will be closest to. So I have some, uh, some Isla helpers in the background that will be looking at these, and I'll do stop. Uh, so I'll say start in the text box and just do it. So there's no rush to do this. So have a think about it. I'm going to give you 10 seconds to think about it. And then I'll type stop. And it has to be within the start and stop of the chat. Uh, and that'll be your answer. So the question is, in kilometers, in kilometers from the city center of Glasgow, the home of Douglas Lane, to Isla, the center of Isla, the home of Big Pete, as the crow flies, what's the distance? Now, I have this answer to three decimal points. Five, four, three, 
two, one, stop. I think everyone got in there. Hope so. So there was no rush to do that. So it was in kilometers, what was the fastest or the as the crow flies from Glasgow city center. So my Isla helpers in the background will let me know on direct message, the winner of the next care package. So what have we got here? Cause I, I know the answer. 54, 135, 220, 80. Oh, ho, ho. I think I might know who is closest, but so we have one more care package up for grabs and that's gonna go to the lucky winner of this here. But again, congratulations to Donald and Colin. Uh, I was surprised to get an email back from me saying, claiming it as soon as possible. We're just trying to show off at the tasting. It's not <laughs> mine, it's my, it's my wife's. All right, <clears throat> that's fine. We'll, we'll, we'll send it to you. Good. We both won. <laughs> no, I won. We both won the taste, and is what I mean. It's fine. There's, there's size specific prizes, so you can tell me your size, not his. <laughs> it's good. We're both the same size. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So, has there been, out of interest, has there been a favourite of the three? Has anyone had a very you know clean cut? That was my favourite of the three versions of Big P. The original for me. Um, yeah, much better. I, I really enjoyed the finish of the original. Um, it just seemed to linger in, you know, on the palette. Really, really nice. What are you doing? Yeah. Brilliant, Andrew. I've had a uh, Petra Core 12, 12. There was the original for me as well. Oh, here we go. I enjoyed them all equally, but in different ways. I have, I have the winners because two people gave the same answer. Rainer is one. And the second joint winner is Phil. I'm trying to pick out where's Phil. Congratulations, Phil and Rainer. So as it's a joint win, we will send you out both. Both. We'll send you out both a care package. Congratulations. I wasn't counting on that. I've only got one of them. I'm only joking. <laughs> so we'll get you both out a care package. So if you email me both, if both of you email me, we'll, uh, we'll get you in touch. How far was it? Sorry? How far was it? Uh, I have... I see your weight. I've got it here. I'll tell you right now. So it was 120.838 kilometres. So Phil and Rainer had 125, I believe. Uh, nice. Is that as the crow as the crow flies? As the crow flies. Yeah. Yeah. So not that far, really. No, actually, not that terrible. But when you consider, I think it's more than double that or triple that um, on roads. Then yeah, a bit of a nightmare and a, and a couple of ferries as well. Uh, I live on Isla, so I know all about it. Oh really? It's like five hours to Glasgow, unless you get the plane. It's half yeah. an hour. <laughs> if, if it's taken. Yeah, off but that plane. robs your bank account. <laughs> If you've ever flown to Isla, you come back with no money. Yeah, if you live in Isla, you get a discount, 50% discount. <laughs> so if you want the distillery additions, it's, uh, it's driving. He's got to wait till you hook your home. So looking at Petricore 12, Petricore 12, cash strength. It's a decent mix uh, of favourite, original for Colin as well. It's really good to see. But the, the good thing is that there's, there is a difference between them. You know, everyone kind of always asks me, like, for example, the age and the core when the age came out. And it's like, well, what's, what's the actual difference? There is a genuine difference. You can taste it. And of course, what we're doing is top wine, intense flavor. I mean, your guys' palates, you're going to be tasting this for the next couple of days. I don't think just in your glass, you will be tasting it. Um, but John's saying always better at cash strength. For me, I would tend to agree. I always love big beat of cash strength because I think it reveals more flavor in it. Um, but if I ever want a peaty whiskey, I, I honestly cannot look past Big Peat Core. Not just saying that, I'm a massive whiskey fan. Um, but if I'm looking for peat classic flavour, obviously you've got, you know, Freud offers amazing things. Kalila offers wonderful things. So does our big. But if you're just looking for that, that peat kick, I, I, I just can't look past Big Peat Core. It just it satisfies that itch every single time. I'd love to get to see a ver shared version. Ronan, me and you both, I would love to see a shared version. Uh, it's big Pete. be great to see It'd be absolutely great to see so ladies and gentlemen what I think I'll do at this time is stop the recording
If there's any other questions you want to ask, please just hammer them in, but I'll stop the recording and then we can let our hair down, as it were, uh, and I can shout a wee bit more. Um, but I just want to thank you all so much for joining the recorded session uh, and I'm hoping to see you all in person soon and hopefully at Douglas House and hopefully at the new distillery uh, once it's absolutely complete. But thank you all. Uh, it's lunch. Cheers.